how do you become more creative? If you currently don't feel creative at all, maybe you drew or painted as a kid, but then you lost it somewhere along the way and now you feel like you're too much of an adult, too busy or too set in your ways and it feels like you've lost your imagination and your ability to learn a creative craft. You missed your chance and now it's too late. I can relate to feeling like that, but fortunately it's not true. It's never too late to start a creative practice. We can all grow as artists, no matter our age or previous experience. There are even advantages to starting a creative craft later in life. So in this video, while I paint this watercolor magpie, I'll talk about some of the ways that you can become more creative, more artistic, how you can begin to awaken and nurture that side of yourself. And this is applicable to most creative crafts, not just art. You can follow this advice as an aspiring writer or musician or actor or dancer or whatever your thing is. And the first thing that you need to understand is that no one is born talented. It's not some magical fairy dust sprinkled on some babies, but not others. We all have more or less the same capacity to be creative and to improve our skills. But we are dealt different cards in life and everyone's journey is unique. Maybe you grew up in a creatively nourishing environment where you had the opportunity to try lots of things and practice a craft. Or you did not have that. Maybe you even had people around you who put you down or spoke negatively about creative professions. All of this affects how you see yourself and how you go about your life. No one is born a gifted artist. No matter your genes or encouraging parents or the schools you go to, the recipe for creative greatness is still the same. Practice, hard work, determination and actually viewing yourself as a creative person, taking your aspirations seriously and setting aside time to practice. And practicing a creative craft is a skill in and of itself. The better we get at practicing, the quicker our talent and our imagination can grow. If we hate practicing, we'll never get anywhere. So this is your first step. And it's the same regardless of what you want to improve at. Learn to love the practice. Learn to love being a beginner and making mistakes and learning from your mistakes. And learn to love practicing your art regardless of the outcome. That's what we all need to do, whether we're just getting started or if we've been doing it professionally for years. You can't compare yourself to others because, like I said, everyone's journey is different. Of course, someone who started practicing ballet at age 5 or started writing songs at age 12 will have an advantage. But so will someone who starts practicing at 35 or 55. They will have a different story and perspective. They will have more life experience and other skills and talents that will play into everything they do. It's not just about the amount of hours spent practicing. Creativity is about making connections and combining existing ideas into new ideas. And the more experience and wisdom you have, the more interesting connections you can make. You might have a fresh perspective that someone who spent 10 or 20 years in a practice bubble won't have. There is such a thing as too much schooling. An example of this is acting. As an actor, your life experience and your memories and your emotions, including your heartbreaks and fears and embarrassments, these are your instruments. And you don't get those from acting classes or from reading books about acting. The same way you don't become a great writer by reading books about writing. And believe me, because I have tried that for many years. What you learn in acting class are various techniques to work with the experiences that you already have. That might be using a specific memory or your imagination in order to play a character believably in a scene. But if your life experiences are limited, the content that you can draw upon in an acting scene is going to be limited. More acting classes doesn't necessarily make you a better actor. Youth and beauty doesn't make you a better actor. Living life makes you a better actor. And it's the same with all other forms of art, like writing and music and art. The bigger your toolbox, the richer and more interesting your art can be. I know it feels that way because we live in a culture that celebrates youth and fears growing old, but there is no expiration date on a creative person. You can start practicing a creative craft and accomplish extraordinary things 
whenever you want and whoever you are. And you actually have an advantage coming into a creative craft later in life. So how then? How do you start a creative practice? I'm just going to tell you the steps that I would take if I were starting from scratch. If I had never before in my life held a paintbrush or attempted to write prose or play the drums. And I believe the steps are mostly the same, no matter what creative discipline you choose. This is the process that I have used to learn a lot of creative skills throughout my life. Everything from music and acting to programming and writing and art. Number one is find your role models. For me, everything begins with finding the right role models, not only to be inspired and to see what's possible in this discipline that I want to learn, but also to make me feel that someone else has done what I want to do and, and to make me feel that it's possible for me to achieve those things as well. There will be people out there that have made the type of journey that you want to make that maybe come from a similar background or have had to overcome the same struggles you're facing, find these people. Get inspired by them and not the army of young prodigies on social media that just make you depressed and make you feel like it's too late for you. My wish to become an artist started partly because I had found a watercolor artist whose work looked like magic to me and whose bird paintings took my breath away. He made me want to learn this craft and use art as a way to express my love of birds. And still, looking at his paintings makes me want to pick up my own brush. Find the people who do the same for you. And find the people who make you feel, if they could do it, I can do it. And then, we have number two. Create a deliberate practice. A routine designed to help you improve as efficiently as possible. And this starts with getting clear on what specifically you need to learn, making a list and organizing it by level of difficulty, and then finding the resources that help you learn these skills. Whatever it is that you want to learn, someone out there is teaching it, often for free on platforms like YouTube. There are also many paid courses on course platforms like Skillshare or Masterclass that can be great resources when you're a beginner at something. Most importantly, paid resources often have a structure to them that free content don't have, and that can make it a lot easier to stay focused. When I started my artist journey, I used primarily YouTube and Skillshare as my learning resources. I simply searched for the skills that I wanted to learn, and I started collecting the best videos and tutorials and classes. And then I set up a routine for myself, one that I would follow every time I sat down to practice. How I would warm up, and what specific skills I would work on, different exercises to try and tutorials to follow. I even gave myself little assignments. One of the first videos that I made on this channel was actually about what my practice looked like at the moment as a watercolorist. Take a look at that for inspiration. The link is in the description. And my routine looks a lot different today, of course, and it will keep changing for you too. But having a process for how you're going to improve will make it a lot easier to stick to and more fun as well than if you would just sit down at the piano or at your easel and just improvise. <laughs> and it will help you improve a lot faster. Even if you have a really busy life and you only have an hour or two a week to practice on, following a routine lets you make the most of that time. And number three, track your journey and reflect on your progress. One of the best things about having a creative practice is to track your growth and your artistic development. It's especially useful those days when you feel like nothing's happening and you're not improving and everything you create sucks. We all have those days and that's when we want to be able to look back and see how far we've come. How you do this is entirely up to you and, of course, dependent on what type of craft you practice. If you want to get better at a writing craft, like fiction writing or screenwriting or songwriting, poetry, you absolutely should keep a journal. Journaling is a way to not only improve at the craft of writing, but also to get to know yourself and spend time with yourself and allow all of those ideas to float up. Journaling is how I stay rooted and centered in my life. It's also how I solve most of my dilemmas and challenges and mental blocks, creative ruts and frustrations. And for more about journaling and my approach to it, watch my video on journaling for creatives. It's also linked in the description. 
If you want to make art, keep a sketchbook, photograph your artwork, hang your paintings on your walls. And as a performing artist, record yourself singing or playing your instrument or dancing or doing monologues. And then go back through your journals or recordings and analyze what you like and what you don't like about what you're doing. Or just to remind yourself that you're doing the work, you're showing up to your practice. You might also want to share your work, but don't worry about that too much in the beginning. We're not talking about how to grow a creative career now. We're only talking about how to get started. How to get over that initial fear and discomfort that we might feel when we embark on something very new to us. And I believe that it's important with a safe space for that. Some privacy while we take those first wobbly steps that are going to feel super awkward. And to experiment and practice in peace before we might want to start sharing our journey with the outside world and all of the challenges that come with that. During my first months as an artist, I kept an art journal just for me. I didn't share my art on Instagram or anywhere else. And it was such a relief. I got to be in my little practice bubble and fail as much as I wanted. Keeping this art journal felt like being my own teacher in a way. And I've done the same before when I've written short stories. I've kept a writing journal on the side place to just brainstorm or spew out all of my frustrations or debrief after a writing session. It's so valuable to not only do your creative work, but to also reflect on your work. So find a way to do that. In conclusion, pick a creative craft that you have always envied or dreamed about exploring. Decide to take this dream seriously from now on which means setting aside time for practice, but probably also investing in the equipment or the supplies needed for this craft. Find some role models that get you inspired, that give you ideas on what specific skills you want to practice, and that make you feel like this is possible for you too. Take the first steps to learn this craft. Find some good learning resources. Create a deliberate practice routine and schedule time for it daily or weekly. And then document your journey. Keep a journal of some kind so that you can look back at your progress and reflect on your practice. Remember, it's never too late. You're not in a rush. You're not competing against anyone else because no one else can do what you do in the exact way that you do it. You are on your creative path and that's exciting. Being a beginner is exciting. I wish you lots of fun on your new creative journey. Before I go, I have some book recommendations for you. And I know you're expecting it, but no, I'm not going to recommend The Artist's Way because, well, I just, I find it too spiritual and too tedious, too obsessed with childhood memories. I've started doing The Artist's Way program countless times. I've never finished the book and I never managed to maintain these practices. If you're curious about it, Give it a shot, maybe it's for you, but it's not, it's not my favorite. And I will recommend some other books that have made the biggest difference for my mindset as a creative. And those are Steal Like an Artist and Show Your Work by Austin Kleon. Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. I Hope I Screw This Up by Kyle Cease. And The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. I'm putting links to all of these in the description for you. I hope this video gave you some direction and encouragement. If you are just setting out on learning a creative skill, please let me know in the comments and we can support each other. And for more musings on the creative life, do subscribe to my weekly newsletter. I send one out every Friday where I tell you about what I'm working on and thinking about and reading, watching, listening to, and any tips or resources that I found that might be of use to you as well. It's free and you can sign up via the link in the description. Oh, and if you want to learn how to paint birds like this in watercolor, I have a class on that. It's called Watercolor Birds and in it I teach you some basic bird anatomy, mistakes to avoid, how to draw birds from different angles and in different poses, and how to paint them step by step. You can find the class on Skillshare and by using my link below you can get a one month free trial. So check that out if you're interested. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another one.